All right, this is Barry and Eric. We got another Lost Arts video uh, coming down the pipeline for you here. If you've watched the previous videos, you know that we've been messing with this uh, little 410 shotgun to see what all kind of uh, random miscellaneous re it'll take to uh, either destroy it or render it completely unsafe. Uh, we thought that a 454 Casul would really do a number on this little guy uh, to make it pretty much completely unusable, completely unsafe. That's definitely not the case. If you saw the last video, uh, the 454 Casul brass that came out of the uh, shotgun is completely normal, no pressure signs, uh, otherwise no damage to the gun. That is correct. Uh, what are we going to do today? Well, what we're going to do today, like we told you in a previous video, we're going to, we're going to chronograph a 454 load out of this 410. Also, over the chronograph, we have a target set over there, so we're going to fire, we're going to attempt to fire a three-shot group we're going to run one over a chronograph to see what kind of speed we're getting. These are Spear Gold Dot 300 grain hollow points. This is what we shot out of it before. This gun has already digested four uh, 444s. 13030 was fire formed to the chamber, and it's already fired one of these successfully. The bore of this gun is 382, and, and that is 387, isn't it? 387? Yes. Let's check this. The bore is 387. That's what it was before we ever started this. Right. So it's not even open 1,000. Not at all. This is a full choke 410. All right, after we chrono a few rounds out of it and group it a few times, we're going to see if we can catch a projectile in a couple of our Homer buckets. That is correct. We chose the Homer buckets from Home Depot because they have the rubber seal in them and they don't leak and it's just a great bucket for the money. And they're cheaper than Lowe's. Cha ching. Let's get started. Seventeen fifty-five. So that's definitely moving at a. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's a relatively strong tick coming out of that thing. Look at that keyhole bullet hole dead center. <laughs> All right, Barry. Hang on. What we got down there? People, you're not gonna believe this. Wow. All right, that is the point of aim directly in the center, that little dot. And we see that the bullet elongated and stretched out, swaged itself down. Now granted, yes, it keyholed, but it was moving at butt naked speeds and that would cause a tremendous wound on an individual or animal. All right, how long did it stretch, Barry? The length of that hole is 972. Wow. The width of it. This is the kicker. I want to see. The width of that hole is just a little over 400,000. So it's swaging it down, but it's stretching that bullet. Wow. That is amazing. And it, it how, what was the greeting on that, Chad? 1755. 17. Yep. 55 on your, on your feet per second. That would, that would cut a man half in two. All right, our second chronograph reading was 1825. You see that the second shot keyholed again and it hit to the right and high. On that third run, we had a velocity of 1842. We'll uh, crunch the numbers and give an average velocity and standard deviation. So Barry, what's the deal here? I mean, we see that the bore looks good. Let's see if I can get a shot of the bore. No adverse pressure signs. Everything looks beautiful. All right, this is after four rounds of 454 Casul. What's Three, our? 387, dead on the nut. So it's not blowing the barrel out at all. I never would have believed it. Never. In Me either. Year, in a million years. Well, we're going to chrono maybe a 444 and possibly a 44 Magnum. You see the bullets are keyholing, but they're falling into about a steady five inch pattern. That's exactly five inches center to center and every one of them is inside the circle. That's amazing. I don't believe it. We're gonna shoot some 45 Long Colt over the crony and a couple of 44 Magnums over the crony and we'll attempt to put them on paper, see where they're hitting. You ready, Barry? Yeah. So far, you know, I'm starting to think that just from the standpoint of being just a chameleon gun, you can't really go wrong with a single bill for a 10 just to have laying around.
This time we were able to get a chronograph reading from the 45 Colt. It's moving at 780.4 feet a second, which is to be expected. The report is rather anemic. Let's look at the target. This is our first shot. I think what Chad said happened, the, in, the core was shed from the jacket. This is the core of the first shot. This is where the jacket hit. This is, this is the second shot, just hits just like the 454. Elongated hole, very narrow, very narrow. But we're only getting 850 feet per second out of it, right? It's like 740. 740, okay. yeah. 780.4. 780.4, there you go. All right, let's move on to some 44 mags, and then we're actually gonna put these things on some water buckets and see what kind of damage they do. We got a chronograph reading of 1114 from the 44 Magnum. We'll have a look at the target. All right, there's where our 44 Magnum struck. So the one consistent thing that we're seeing here is that all of these rounds keyhole, they all elongate, and they all come out at pretty much velocities that are either par for the course or faster that you would expect. than what you would expect. So I think we don't really have anything left to prove as far as velocity and accuracy. We see what we can expect out of them. So now we're going to destroy some stuff. This is the funnest part. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, did we get a capture? We did. All right, let's have a look. Did it catch it? It did. Oh, wow. You got it? There's fragments. Oh, son. Yeah, now that's what I like to call a result. <laughs> that is a result. Check that out, people. Look at that. Now, Eric, that went through like four feet of water. It sure did. I mean, that, that I, right I there there's a dimple in the back of the bucket. is what we call a result. All right, Barry, let's have a look at the brass real quick, just for our viewers. Look at that. <laughs> Ejected like it's made for like it. Like it's made for it. Well, get, this, get has been, down that board. this has been an eye-opening experience for me. I mean, I know a good bit about guns and everything, but I can say that throughout this process, I definitely learned something about guns that I didn't know. That's amazing.